scanning for audio. Welcome to a Tin Dog Podcast. Oh, it feels like such a long time since I've been anywhere near a microphone. Well, you'll be pleased to know that time hasn't been wasted. I've been working on, well, a submission for Radio 4's new open window writer's room thing. It only says on the website that there'll be a window of opportunity open at some point in December. So, I'm getting my script all ready to send in then. If things fail, at least it'll all be done. And as for geek myths, well, that's being checked through by someone who's just a tad busy because it's panto season. If you were available, and you are particularly good at spelling and can put up with the works of a dyslexic, give me a shout. But that's beside the point. What is important today is that we talked, me and you, about Torchwood. There's been a few Torchwoods out of recent months, there's Torchwood Archive and, of course, Torchwood Outbreak. This time I'm talking about Torchwood Outbreak. Now, for those of you who followed the Tin Dog podcast, and God bless you for doing that sort of thing, I've been extolling the virtues of Torchwood for ages. Everyone knows that I'm a bit of a fan of Series 2. I quite liked Series 1. And it all went downhill from there. Yes, I'm not an enormous fan of the Yantonis, but for me, and I've said this before and I will be saying it again, Torchwood truly, truly belongs on audio with Big Finish. You can achieve all sorts, and the effects will never age. They will never look slightly ropey, because, as always with Big Finish, the effects are in your head. Captain Jack will never, ever get old, Yanto can always be alive. Yes, I know he died, but he can always be alive in the flashbacks. If anyone's available, they can be in it, and if they're not, they don't have to be. Susie Costello can make an appearance. Hell, everyone can, but that's another review for another time. I simply adore Torchwood on audio. They started off being something a little bit more than, let's say, a companion chronicle where you've got small casts, chatting, possibly readings, and then they expanded. They pushed the envelope. That's what Torchwood has always been good at, starting on BBC Three, getting more viewers than anyone else, and then expanding onto BBC Two, then BBC One, and then Radio Four. It, it's been everywhere. It's always on the forefront of the new technology and of pushing the, well, the envelope. And you know what? We can be grateful for that. Yes, it has to keep reinventing itself and reintroducing it, but as fans, we followed it doggedly. And so, with Torchwood Outbreak, we have the first official full cast Torchwood. Yes, it's set after Series 2, but before Series 3, and nowhere near Series... Well, let's not go down that road. You've got Gwen, you've got Yanto, you've got Jack. Yanto is still alive and he's not making an appearance as a ghost or anything like that. Jack is firing on full Jack cylinders. This is when people are happy. Yes, we've lost two of the main five. But you know what? If they'd been available, I'm sure they'd be here. And hopefully they'll make an appearance at some point in the audios. There's only really Owen who's not turned up so far. And I'm sure he will. Oh, I'm really sure he will at some point. So what have we got? We've got Torchwood Outbreak. We've got basically a mini-series. Now, I've banged on for far too long about how Torchwood's always pushing the envelope. And here we've got something new from Big Finish. Not on audio, no, no. We've got a new way of working. 
You've got three main discs, three parts of the story, three parts, three episodes. So it's a mini series, you know, like Children of Earth, only good. But here you've got something that's not been tried with Torchwood. You've got the equivalent of a writer's room. Yes, it's got three writers, but they've worked together. They haven't done an episode each and then made sure that everything fits. Well, they might have a bit, but they're actually pushing the envelope together, bringing each other along, pushing each other to work harder and better and in new and interesting ways. Emma Reeves is known, yes, to most of us, as one of the writers from CBBC. Now, if anyone out there has the gall to say that a children's author is not a real author, then please just stop listening to the Tin Dog podcast because that's just not where I'm at. Children's authors work just as hard as any other authors and they have to work within the constraints of children's TV, which are incredible. They've got narrative for the most demanding audience on earth. If a child is bored, they will be honest and they will leave. Emma Reeves is a great writer. In fact, all three people involved in this are pretty damn good. Guy Adams, well, he's been bashing out Doctor Who and class. Yes, we've done that review. Left, right and centre. This guy lives in Spain and is still producing some fantastic worth. Thank the universe for Skype because these three writers have got together and produced a thing of beauty that is Torchwood Outbreak. But what's it all about? That's the question you always ask and that's what I'm here to answer. It's a three disc set. It's a mini series as I've said and the tagline is first they know you, then you love, then you kill. Yeah. Now it's one of those things where I can talk about in general about how absolutely stunningly marvellous it is, because it is. But then I can't go into too much depth because I don't want to give you spoilers. And trust me, this is Torchwood. There would be spoilers. So here's the unspoilery synopsis. A medical trial's gone terribly wrong and one of the test subjects is loose in the streets of Cardiff. Within hours... A virus is raging out of control and the bodies start piling up. The government scrambles to control the outbreak, but isn't too keen on anyone finding out the dark history of the virus. Captain Jack Harkness has encountered the infection before and knows that something alien is hiding inside it. With the city sealed off and murderous mobs rampaging through the streets, Torchwood has to save something even more important than the human race. Now, as I said, it's been written by Guy Adams, Emma Reeves and A.K. Benedict. It's brilliant. All directed by Scott Hancock, so he's dragged the whole thing back together. And of course, you've got the production of James Goss. James Goss, tiny bit busy at the moment. Yeah, so looking forward to his new Douglas Adams adaptation. But again, we can save that for January when it comes out. You see, here you've got Captain Jack Harkness. You've got Yanto. You've got Eve. You've also got Kai Owen, you've got Andy Davison. But if you look down the list, you'll also see Norton Folgate turning up. Oh, you know what? When you're listening to this story, I actually forgot for a few moments that Norton was never in the original run of Torchwood. He fits in so utterly smoothly and perfectly that you sort of question yourself and go, Oh my god, I can't remember. Norton is brilliant. He is a shining beacon in this story. I can't tell you how perfectly created and acted and performed and thought through Norton's character is. It's true completely. And yes, yes, if you're a fan of a certain Julian and Sandy sketch, you'll pick up on the Polari and you'll love it even more. That's not what this is about. Oh, it's so dark. Not as dark as Survivors, but you know what? You don't want to kill yourself afterwards. Well, not as much as usual. And then, oh, it's just brilliant. Yes, there is the outbreak. Yes, there are people dying left, right and centre. But you know what? It's so definitively tortured as to make you want to weep. That sounds worse than I meant it to, but you know what I mean. It's a very positive review of an exceptionally positive thing. 
Torchwood Outbreak will fit so perfectly with your view of Torchwood. So if ever you've been thinking, should I, shouldn't I do this? Well, the answer is yes, you should. Because quite frankly, it's marvellous. And with that, I'll play you the trailer and let you decide for yourself. But as far as I'm concerned, Torchwood belongs on audio. And this is the best example. So until next time, be seeing you. I need to speak to Torchwood! Coming soon from Big Finish Productions. Stage one, your head's not your own. Stage one, stage one of what? More reports trickling in, same general pattern. People just stopping what they're doing and entering a fugue state. We're all in danger. Why? Don't you see? Sir, put down the knife. This is unbelievable. The traffic's gone mad and so have half the people. What the hell is going on? Between you and me, I think you're about to have a bit of a time of it. Convoy 4 to control, ETA to Cardiff, 20 minutes. They're building a cordon around the city. They can't do that. Convoys 1, 3 and 8 already in position. Roadblocks assemble. I've got to tear it out! Somebody get in here now! Big Finish. We love stories. For now, it's recommended that you follow the advice of the official police statement. Stay at home and stay safe. That was the Doctor Who Tin Dog Podcast, available on iTunes, YouTube, Twitter, RSS, Vimeo, and across the internet. Doctor Who and its associated properties are all copyright and trademark of the BBC. No infringement is intended. Why not become a supporter by visiting patreon.com slash tin dog? Contact the show on tin-dog at hotmail.co.uk. The Tin Dog Podcast is a founder member of the Doctor Who Podcast Alliance. 